Welcome to the Black and Out Table. From the 718, right off the vegan, the man with the silkiest do-rag, Manny. From Virginia by way of Europe, he gives his all every week. Cody Bray. Live and direct from Strong Island, the certified good you, Sky High E. You're listening to the Black and Out Table. There we go. Hello. Now, now we are on pace. Now we are on track. You feel me? That's the way that we got to start it. Not with the, <laughs> not with the whole. <laughs> Gang is all here. You know it. My boy Cody in the building. Manny's back, fresh off of AK. Feel me? You feel me? And we're joined with a special guest today. Y'all might seen. Y'all might have seen her. Heard a podcast. I'm sure you've seen her tweets going crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? We have Miss Lowe from the Wrestling Wind Down podcast with us this evening. Come on now. Can we get a round of applause? I got you. I got you. Hopefully it's the right one. <laughs> Man, how we feeling? Excited to be here. I love your guys' show. I love the marketing that you guys have. Some of the best that I've seen in a wrestling podcast because some people don't know how to do it. Wow. <laughs> you get wow. a couple of associates degree to, together, and that's what you get right here. Magic. That's very what, impressive. If you guys want to know how to market your podcast, go to community college. <laughs> you feel me? I went for two and a half years. <laughs> feel me? It did wonders for my life. So I'm just saying. Yeah, you know I mean. Lloyd, did you go to community college? You went to college, college. I went to college, college. I went to UNLV for uh, journalism and media studies. Ooh. Mm. Right, so we, there's no fucking around today, guys. <laughs> 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 we have a pro. She yeah. knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Word. We can't just bullshit for two hours now. Yeah, for real. Like I, my associate's degree in business administration. I had, yo, you just blew me out the water with that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I guess that one communications class isn't really going to hold me down like I thought it would. Legit. You know what's crazy? Communications, I took that in my final semester of school, and that was my favorite class. Like I went through like however many semesters of school. I was like, damn, bro, college sucks. Got to final semester, took communications. I was like, damn, this shit is ill. And then I never, like, I graduated, and that was it. Never looked back. Started doing, you feel me, construction. Hate my job to this day. You feel me? We sheet rocking every day, but it is, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Pay the bills. You know what I mean? I mean, as long as it, it, it pays the bills. Hey, it Come on, we can't complain. It got us all of this podcast equipment. And you feel me? Quite frankly, that was the best investment I ever made in my life. Wow. Real. That that $200 on a microphone and, and uh. And interface, <laughs> look where we at now. You know what I'm saying? So what can I say? Shout out to that one's comms class. <laughs> Legit. So nah, how how's everybody's weekends, man? Let's start with you. How was your weekend? It was lovely. Um, what did I do? I went to um I don't know if you guys know who Twitter list Rachel is, but she is my friend who I've gotten into wrestling. We went out downtown Las Vegas, had a good time. Um, that was pretty much it. I mean, one night out, I'm good. I think I'm getting too old for this stuff. In Vegas, too. I'm, one night out of Vegas, that's a solid, that's equivalent to like two and a half like New York nights. You know what I'm saying? Maybe two. I would say it depends on where you're going because if you're going like to the club club, I don't do that. The locals don't do that unless they absolutely have to go to the club, but Obviously, the visitors love going out and, you know, on the strip and stuff like that. I was about to. I've never been to Vegas. So if you could break down like for, for a rookie. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. As much as I gamble and talk about it, I've I've never been. I'm a, a virgin to Vegas. So he wants to end up like uh, Bruno Mars, basically. Oh. He wants to go to tips. <laughs> they said that's fake. They said it's not true. 
Yeah, he only owes twenty five million in gambling. <laughs> <laughs> But now, what what is the go to spots for? And I'm not talking gambling. We we know the gambling spots, you know what I'm saying. But as far as Vegas goes, what you know, if it's your first time out there, it's like yo, where do I go? What do I? What should I tap into? What bar is ill? Um, it depends on your vibe. If you're going for more of like a party vibe, I would definitely do a brunch somewhere. Um. Trying to think of a good brunch that I've had recently. Um, Lavo has a good party brunch. I've never done it, but I've heard really good things. Um, Lavo is also a nightclub, so it kind of was like a nightclub during the day. Um, hmm, I love Mastro's, the steakhouse. That's a good one to go to. Um, Mom and Pops, I would say there's a good place called um, Your Way. It's like a breakfast spot. It's black owned as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a new R&B, like vinyl only uh, lounge that just opened that I want to check out that I've heard is pretty good as well. So those are my spots to recommend. Um, and they're all kind of downtown Las Vegas. Um, some are like on the uh, north side and then you have some that are on the strip. So I, yeah, I might have to. <laughs> I, well, uh, for obvious reasons, I, people know and the listeners know. Obviously, I'm gonna be in Vegas, bro. I gotta be in Vegas. I gotta tap in. I'm gonna be in Vegas soon. You feel me? But definitely, I'm gonna have to hit the the R and B spot that you talking about. Yeah, yeah right. Records only. That's you feel and me? that's hold black you owned up. as well. I'm I'm not gonna hold you. Everything you named, if you would have told me that all of those spots were like in Queens or Brooklyn, <laughs> I would have believed you. Lavo, mm -hmm. Maestro, mm -hmm. come on, Maestro <laughs> sounds like a, a Queens staple. <laughs> she said Lavo. I, in my head, yo, there was a spot we used to go to after we recorded the show called Lavu. Man, mm -hmm. it was it was legit, like a a little club, like in a cut, and like when I tell you the vibes it was a vibe it didn't last very long because pandemic killed it but man it was a, it was a vibey little spot man i'm not gonna lie mm, look man good times oh <laughs> good times good <laughs> times I'm telling you lavu was one of them you know what i'm saying and if you ever come to new york i recommend i don't do brunch no more i'm lying i do a little bit you feel me sometimes <laughs> Lied. <laughs> but like I've I've gotten to the point because I'm like we we don't me and my boy we don't dumb brunches to the to the point where it's like all right come on like like we really at this point we just going just to drink and pass out. you know what I'm saying but I've gotten to the point where it's like you know what I want to enjoy some food when I go to brunch so I've I recently went to a spot called the Shady Lady in Queens. Oh and, I like that the Shady Lady. Oh yeah no nah, it's a it's a real when I tell you the food on point and the drinks on even more on point, man. And the waiter, hey man, shout to whoever the waiter is that comes around when your drink is like half, he fills you up all the way. And when your drink gets to half, he's like, oh, more, more mimosa, more Bellini, more this, that, and the third. And he really he holds you down, man. I ain't gonna lie. They don't mess around with the drink. So if anybody's looking for a nice brunch spot in New York City, the shady lady has great food, great drinks. And it's a nice little vibe, you know what I'm saying? But if you want like a ratchet turn up, get drunk brunch with sections and bottles, you could. I heard, um, what's the spot we used to go to? Oh my gosh, god damn it! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my, not Williamsburg. Come on, man. The spot it was right by the Barclays Center. Oh, um, Woodland. Woodland. yeah, 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 Woodland is back. And if you know, you know, man. Woodland. Whew, I ain't gonna you're not going to recommend. You're not going to recommend that spot you went with uh, Eric Adams. Yo. First of all, I didn't go there with him. <laughs> Secondly, that was uh, a. <laughs> yeah, that was um in Dykeman. Also, if you want to come to New York and you want to. If you go to Dykeman, just don't drive. I'll say that because there's literally no parking. You will not be able to park anywhere unless you double park your car. You could do that, but triple park. You know, but if you're going to Dykeman, it's a vibe. You'll love it. Try, you would love Dykeman 100 percent You feel me? The music popping. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's hookah, but everywhere, literally everywhere has hookah. The food is good, the drinks is, is flowing. 
so yeah, Dykeman is is the place. It's just no parking there because it's literally it's all like parking garages and it's is mad expensive to do it. And it's also like shady, like uh, not VIP, shady like valet. Like people be outside in like a valet shirt and be like, yo, I'll park your car for you. And it's oh, like, hell no. But I'm <laughs> okay, but it's, it's to the point where it's like, yo, I really am trying to get in the spot right now. I circled the block for 45 minutes. I have no choice but to trust this Dominican that can't speak <laughs> my car can be like sleep. Sleep. with a red hoodie on, not even a vest. You got the same red <laughs> hoodie as Eve right now. I'm telling you, you, you get out your car, you leave your key in the car, you give them $20 and do one of these, and you go your way and you, you get your car back when you come back. It's New York, man. <laughs> what That's can I say? I did, that, I did that outside of Dallas BBQ one time. Are you valet parked your car? Dallas BBQ? <laughs> Looking back, <laughs> a wild statement, but yeah, it, looks, it had to be done. I couldn't find a spot. I'm saying, man happens but yeah the and, and you know in case you ever visit new york anytime in the future just dykeman and the shady lady those are two very dope spots that you should visit i will add those to my list thank you for sure for sure for sure well guys we got a lot of business to get into you know what i'm saying we got some becky lynch to talk about we got some mercedes monet to talk about uh, Kyle O'Reilly's back, apparently. And we have some Darby Allen to get into. Pause. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, wild tweet of the week. Yeah, I just throwing, yeah, I gonna throw my tweet on the on the screen. Like, that's <laughs> what we're doing. Can you explain what happened here? All right, let me let me explain this. So, lunchtime, you know, <laughs> I work from home. You know what I'm saying? Let me get a little quick, little jerk chicken, rice and peas. You know what I'm saying? Just to, on my lunch break, get some good lunch. You know, I tell them to leave it outside. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> just leave that outside at the door. I'm going to just go and get it. I go and get it. I see a Walgreens bag. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is weird. <laughs> I ain't think nothing of it. Even though I'm carrying it back to the inside in this mad light. I open it and it's a plan B <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> this is not jerk chicken. Like, yo, I was yo, I was so tight because I was hungry as hell. Like I was starving. Cause I could have just made some food, like, but nah, I need like you know what I'm saying? Let me order this real quick. They gave me a plan B to eat for um for one. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is crazy. Can you pull that picture back up, KP? I just, no. Is this a <laughs> plan B? I've never seen this. I don't know what type of. <laughs> I've never seen Take that. action. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> hey. Yo, imagine it's coming down to the final hour. <gasps> oh, and no. You and you open up your bag and you have jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. <laughs> And yo, every everybody was saying that, like, nah, what, what about me? Like, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> like, your boy is hungry. Like, I'm about to pass out. <laughs> and y'all, like, nah, <laughs> worried about me. Y'all don't know her. It's me. Yeah. Yo. Well, did you get your money bed. back? <laughs> yeah, I, I got my money back. And then the guy, <laughs> he called me back on the phone. He's like, yo, <laughs> I gave you the wrong joint. And y'all like, what's your address? I'm going to come. I'm like, all right, bet. So I I got a refund and I got food. So, man, it, yeah. so was the food free, or you had to you had to reinvest back into the the jerk chicken? Nah, it was free. It was free. Okay, at that it point, was probably cold though. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't. Now, I don't. Well, I don't know. I was. I I don't inhaled the plate by then. Like I didn't even. I don't remember chewing it. I was just <laughs> like, you know, I was dogging it. So, yeah, yeah. Speaking of dog, and somebody never got their plan B. Damn. Oh my yo, God. hold your head, bro. Whoever, <laughs> whoever, but see, this is why, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I go to the store and do it myself. You feel me? <laughs> yo, all this new technology, nah, bro. <laughs> you see what just happened? Somebody got jammed up. That's crazy. They could have at least gave me somebody else's food. Like I'm starving <laughs> at the crib. Like what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> Nah, I plan getting a plan B for long. I would have, I don't, bro. Honestly, 
like <laughs> the way I would have reacted was like because I already do like I don't react well like at work. So I like and but like the work we do is different. So like imagine if it was me, like I'm outside like digging up like a seven foot ditch. And I'm like, damn, so I'm mad hungry. Uber eats pull up, drop off a Walgreens rack. I'll look in it, it's a plan B, bro. I would then, I would jump in the ditch and just hit, throw the dirt over my head, <laughs> Yeah. I'm not doing this today, man. <laughs> Tell you. I hope it made it to its home where right. it was supposed to be. I mean, Hopefully. I wish there was a way to keep up with this uh this story, like whoever this is. Word. <laughs> Cause I don't I don't care. Let now I got my food, I got free. I'm I'm full now. Like I, I bet now we can see what happened with it. Oh, Y'all man. jumping out the window. What about her? Uh, <laughs> did you give your dasher, did you give your dasher a good rating at least? No, he, he did come back though. No, he son, I was, back. yo, did he take the Plan B back? Yeah, we 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 did the swap. You know what I mean, the Jersey swap, <laughs> jerk chicken for a Plan B. I I guess. Like I said, we did a Jersey swap. It's both y'all holding <laughs> you holding up a plate of jerk chicken like this, like it's the Jersey. <laughs> man, oh man, that's <sighs> the hey. funniest thing I've ever seen. What's this one? The hair, the skin, the booty, and the angle is ten out of ten. But the booty. Oh, he's talking about his girl. Oh, I yo, I didn't even realize that was Leon Ruff. I was like, yo, <laughs> who is this sick nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was about to be like, yo, he's down bad, but okay. All right, I'm rolling. Shout out to Leon, bro. Bro, talking crazy, but nah, that's his wife, though. Shout out to Leon, man. You feel what me? a guy. Word. Flex bomb for Leon. <laughs> Flex bomb for love. <laughs> for love. Word. Hey, yo, uh, I would pull up. Yo, KP, I really wish you had the, uh, the sexy red and Antonio Brown interaction <laughs> happened with our tweet but it's okay you know what i'm saying we can add that in post but yeah. shouts to sexy red shouts to antonio brown we here <laughs> <laughs> let's get to it. let's get to the good stuff man all right y'all check it out we got five patreon tiers okay we have the dollar tier which is just a dollar it's a donation we have the five dollar tier which is audio and discord access we have the ten dollar tier which gets you audio video discord access and a discount on merch and the twenty dollar tiers for the ballers you get all of that plus you get to be on one of the shows that's on the patreon all right subscribe to the patreon today become a patron i'm eve and i approve this message we out the block and out table Yeah, man, we here, we back. You know the vibes. We're joined with a special guest, Miss Lowe from the Wrestling Wind Down Podcast. You feel me? Had to make that be known once more. Yeah, let's get into it, KP. Let's start with Darby, Mr. Darby Allen. So it appears that uh, Mr. Darby Allen has broken his foot. Uh, and this this isn't a, a work, it's a shoot. He's actually legitimately hurt. And this happens right before his Mount Everest, uh, what do we call it, Ex- excursion? Expedition. Yeah, expedition. You know, only expedition I know is the truck, but, you know, we here. <laughs> Darby Allen's foot is broke. This is a blessing in disguise, honestly, um, because if he climbed that mountain, he was going to die. And I've been saying this for a long time, that Tony Khan, I feel personally that Tony Khan has... Yo, KP, if you could put the um, X-Files music over this. I feel that Tony Khan has life insurance on Darby Allen, And he was waiting for him to climb that mountain so he could cash in on like $5 million, bro. Or maybe 10 Who knows how much it was for, but in my heart of hearts, I'm like, yo. Because he does too much wild, wild shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just jumped in the glass for no reason. I seen him with like Travis Pastrana doing like backflips on a motorcycle, falling off. Nah, bro. There's no way he doesn't have insurance on him. So Darby, consider your life saved, pal. I I think for me it was the timing. Like next week, you supposed to <laughs> go climb the mountain. 
And just like the last week before, you break your foot two minutes into the match against um Jay White. I was like, fam. It was it happened two minutes into the match? Yeah. It was oh, early man. in the match. Like, Damn it, Darby. Heal up, Darby. Please come back and risk your life some more on television for us to, so I can be entertained. Legit. I just hope he doesn't post any more feet pics. We, I don't need that. <laughs> Listen, there's a there's a market for it. Somebody's willing to buy them. Well, he's putting them out there for free. His little swollen dogs. I don't need to see all that. <laughs> <laughs> the swollen dogs. You could have not an OnlyFans. Him and Karuchi got the same feet, if you ask me. <laughs> all right, all right, no. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Is it not crazy that like he was having a match one week before he was gonna climb Mount Everest? Usually you're training, you know, getting your your lung capacity up there, doing doing mountainous things. And he's over here wrestling Jay White. No, we good. Bro, I just I just jumped 40 feet off of a ladder in the glass last week. I could climb a mountain. Yeah. And how does that not hurt him? But then he breaks his feet in a match with Jay, with Jay White. <laughs> like, jumping off a ladder onto some glass is fine, but a, th- a Wednesday night dynamite match is it's too much for his body. It's a blessing in disguise, bro. I'm telling you. he God did not want him to climb that mountain, man. Hmm. You belong in that ring doing stupid shit. Not on this mountain doing stupid. <laughs> Not <laughs> mountain doing stupid shit. I agree. He said next year he's gonna do it. Come on, Darby. Why does he start with like small shit? Start with like a small climb. Uh, climb on um, Mount Vernon. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Climb. Go to uh, the Statue of Liberty. Or something. Climb the Statue of Liberty first. <laughs> you feel me? Then we'll move on. Climb the Empire State Building. Let's work our way up to Mount Everest. Bro, just talking about you. I'm gonna climb Mount Everest. And what's what's the infatuation with that? Dying. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's it's a like you know he does like death defying things, and then lives. So he's like, oh look, I made it. I, I get that, but like certain things to me is like I uh, like you're wilding. You know what I'm saying? Like I get that you want to. You know, I I get being like adventurous and all that you know what i'm saying i might i might go outside and hike take a little hike you know what i'm saying that's adventurous to me i'll i'll jump out of a plane i think that's pretty adventurous you know what i'm saying but bro climbing does how first off how long does it take to climb mount everest i got you days days i've heard days yeah i mean so it's is day you gotta climb mount everest then you gotta um you have to obviously you have to rest, bring tent and food and water and all this. Come on, it's not worth it, man. Okay. Yo, hours of climbing time. How much? Sixteen hours. Forty. Yeah, hell no. Oh. Yo, Darby, hold on. Yo, Darby Allen, you have nothing to prove. We believe you. <laughs> You want to be a stunt man? Like we seen what you do on television. You have nothing to prove to us. You know we know you about that life. All right, just stay right. here. That's it. Thanks. And then you'll get this. Once you get to the top, you have to climb back down. <laughs> so it's like that's eighty hours combined of climbing, bro. I've never seen him climb down anything. He might jump off the top <laughs> onto some glass. I'm not at the bottom. <laughs> Yo, man, Darby. This is consider this a, a a blessing, man. We we want to see you wrestle some more. So thank God, man. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, what we got next, KP? We have more injury. Oh, bro, <laughs> brother Elias, Deacon Elias. Oh man, what this? Don't run from the Lord and say that's a fact, man. I don't run from the Lord and say. Shouts to my Lord and Savior, man. Yo, so apparently KP seen this and he sent this in the group chat at like 3 a.m. He was like, yo, Elias on TikTok live preaching. I was like, "I right. <laughs> On TikTok? Uh-huh. First off, TikTok yeah. live is where it's at, if we're being honest. <laughs> but fam. <laughs> I've seen Soldier Boy get 17 bands off TikTok live. <laughs> so you telling me Deacon Elias can't pull in a little brief? 
that's soldier boy this is elias <laughs> like, <laughs> like what are you doing that's, on tiktok bro three in the morning he's on Damn. there all the time for I've real? been on there a couple times and I'll just keep scrolling and then I see him and he's like deep in the Bible and I'm like, okay, I hope you're making this... some money from this because you've been on here a couple hours. You could be doing uh, something else. I tap into a, uh, an Elias Bible study. I ain't gonna lie. I see what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's up, Elias? What you, what you talking about, Elias? Let's see what you talking about, bro. Where TikTok you know? Live is just Elias, Ryback, and Miles Morales. And Soldier Boy. Yeah, and so just we're making 17 but 17 bands is crazy. But who would you want as your preacher? Elias or mm. Jameis Winston? Can they co-preach? Can we do like <laughs> honestly if I, you could do like a co-preaching type of thing? Going back and forth like the locks. Yeah, like we do a little co-pastor situation. I'll <laughs> hey, man. I love it. Shouts to Elias. Wait, so. so is he like saying things or is he like just straight up reading from the Bible? No, he's saying stuff like he'll read and then he'll kind of go over the verses. He'll answer people's questions. I got to tap in. I just need to see what this is like because it's Elias. <laughs> I'll, tell me, I'll tap in. I'll tap into a, a Elias Bible study. Does he go by Elias? What's, what's his real name? I feel like we owe him. At least like Eli is more biblical. Mm. Forgot what his name is. Hold on, pull that picture back up, KP. I just want to see if his name is at the bottom of that pic. Nah, it's not. You cropped it out on purpose. Jeffrey School. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Jeffrey Isn't that Muhammad Hassan's real name. <laughs> it yeah. might. Shouts to Jeffrey Scalulio. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> Whatever that fucking means. He's <laughs> <laughs> Italian this whole time. Nah, if Elias is Italian, bro. X Files music, we gotta run. 23's and me's, we about to run them, bro. Never in my life. Elias is Italian. Get the hell out he of here. He looks like he could throw down like a mad chicken par, maybe a little pasta. <laughs> He does. I ain't gonna lie. He do. Linguini. Sunday, Sunday dinner after you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, the that wine. might be the most Italian thing about him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the vibe y'all getting from Elias? Chicken parm? Now that I see it. With some wine? <laughs> that might be hitting. I ain't gonna hold you. You gotta put that on TikTok. Elias definitely watched The Sopranos a couple times. <laughs> Nigga said with some wine. Y'all are crazy. I feel like he's more of a mob wives guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, Elias is 100% a Trinity Broadcast Network guy. You feel me? We watching Creflo Dollar and Joel Osteen in this house. Oh, my yeah. God. You feel me? Joel Osteen, man. Yo, Joel Osteen, I, I ain't going to get into it, but. Yo, they, they found him racks in his bathroom, and we never heard about bro ever. You know, you ain't hear about that? No. Yeah. Hey, apparently, yo, know, there was a plumber like doing some work in Joel Osteen's church, and I guess he had to like break a wall to access a pipe. The guy found some some moolah, some some money, and he was like, "Yo, uh, I found this money in y'all's wall," and that was the last we ever heard of uh, <laughs> of said plumber. So it was he it was like hundreds. Like they didn't know. Yeah, it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and like. The bathroom in the bathroom That's wall. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Joel Olsen, I'm looking at you a little funny, brother. You feel me? But, Listen, he said God wanted him to have the riches. So, yeah. But what to about hide him in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> God gave him the, the hiding spots. <laughs> it's a little, you feel me? I just want to know where bro is at if he's safe and sound. But that's a story for a different day. Shouts to Elias, though. I definitely am gonna tap into his uh, his TikTok live. See what he's talking about. Is it just TikTok? I wonder if he's on uh, IG also. Cross platform is the thing. You got to do everything, bro. To be honest. Yeah, he got a brand. He got to come over to IG. Yeah, nah, to really, cause I'm I've been watching how these streamers get down, bro. And they'll stream like Twitch, YouTube, TikTok live, like everything simultaneously. So I I don't know if that's his mo. If he's trying to stream everything at once, but. You know, 
if, you, if you're trying to get to it, you might as well go all the way across the board. You know what I mean? That's facts. Uh, KP, can you please bring up Kyle O'Reilly while we're talking about the boys? Pause. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Kyle O'Reilly? He definitely looks like him. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen Kyle O'Reilly in so long. This don't even – this looks like the – um. I'm not gonna lie. This looks like Kevin Von Eric, bro. Like he came back to pay per view. Yeah, he did. Which pay per view? During, during when when Roderick um beat Orange Cassidy for the um for the title. But this is his first match back since breaking his arm. I, yo, I didn't know his arm injury was so severe. KP said this nigga had type two diabetes and he couldn't move his arm, bro. No lie. These are the worst like medical facts of all time. Like, this... <laughs> bro, I went to community college. Okay, so uh, wait, so he, <laughs> so he couldn't, <laughs> so, so his broken arm was the reason why he couldn't. The, the diabetes had nothing to do with the broken arm, or the diabetes played a it part played, in it. it played, it played a part. Okay, in my, my uh, it's actually type one diabetes. Just wanted to correct that. Yeah, so apparently he had really bad diabetes. Either diabetes is diabetes, bro. Type one, two, or three. Yeah. It's diabetes. Come on. You feel me? It's bad. So it played a part into his, you know, his arm injury. And apparently Bro couldn't use his arm for KP said he couldn't use his arm after the next surgery for like 10 months, which is insane. Wow. So, what happened to him? He broke his arm. He was just going through it. He Damn, I, I didn't know arm, arm injuries got that serious. To be honest yeah. with you, complications. I guess. Hey, wow. Well, I'm happy that he's back. I'm happy that he's back doing what he loves. So, you know, exactly. that's a blessing. Yeah. No, that's hundred percent. How you feeling about it, Lou? You seem perplexed by my. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Eve. Hold on, hold on. By, your, by your web and D analysis. <laughs> by, by my medical assessments. Yo, that was crazy. I ain't gonna lie, that was crazy. He was like, "Yeah, his diabetes broke his neck, he dislocated <laughs> his arm." Yo, let me tell you something. When I have children, bro, they're like, "Yo, daddy, I don't feel good." I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> yeah, you hundred percent have dengue fever." <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain you have Ebola. Pack it up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm happy to see Kyle back. Um. I am interested to see where this storyline goes because I don't know how long Adam Cole has left in his little wheelchair, but I feel like once he's out of the wheelchair, I think hell, all hell is going to break loose. I don't think Roderick and Kyle are going to get along for too much longer. And also at the same time, I'm wondering if Bobby Fish is a little bit jealous. Like I understand he's, you know, probably rewriting the Declaration of Independence, but is he jealous that all his friends are in AEW together and he's not over there? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Bobby Fish is one of those people who have gotten so many chances everywhere, and it just just wasn't meant to be. So it's not. You know what? Yeah, keep go to wherever he is. He'll be. He's actually doing DDP yoga in Philly. There you go. Shouts out now. Maybe maybe an Ethan I stop by if we go to if we go to Mania. Shouts to uh, shouts to Bobby Fish doing DDP yoga, man. I was gonna say like, uh, isn't he in TNA? But I I really don't know. Last time I see, he was boxing a dude on like uh, or oh, that Japanese guy. He wasn't Japanese. He was like was black he? dude. Yeah, he was like African or something. Oh, and he, that black dude knocked him out, right? <laughs> no, I think he knocked him out. Oh, where? Yeah, Bobby Fish won. I remember. I feel like this was years ago, like. Yeah, it might have been like a year and a half. Yeah. Wow. Wait, speaking of like you, you mentioned uh, Adam Cole in the in the wheelchair. Hello. Um, how do how do you feel about the undisputed kingdom? Or that stable. How do you feel about it? I'm not a fan of it. Okay, we on the same page. I, I think 
Well, first of all, I think Wardlow is definitely bored in the stable. I don't really feel like he wants to be there, but I also feel like they don't know what to do with him at this point. So they kind of plugged him in there. Really doesn't make any sense other than the MJF connection, but where the hell is MJF at? So. Yeah. They they dropped the ball with Wardlow so many times. It's just like, all right, man. That yeah. whole stable is not it for me either. So I'm right there with you. Come on over, Wardlow. <laughs> Property of NXT, man. Class of 2024. Come <laughs> on and get the T-shirt ready. Just come on over here, man. It's okay. Um, apparently, the uh, the WWE is like the next state. They just can't get a free agent. So I don't know if the Wardlow deal would ever happen. Oh, my. Wait, that is what they're saying, right? <laughs> did did you, you see that article, though? That yeah, the, I did. That the New York Post put out? Did you listen, did you guys read the article? Uh, I did because listen, the New York Post. If it's one thing they know how to do, is write just the most garbage. click, yeah, the most clickbait garbage headline. Then you read the article and you're like, wow, the author is even worse than I thought at writing. <laughs> and that's exactly what the New York Post did today. You know, wow, what a what a terrible headline. I mean, what a terrible article. Not even you read the quote tweets. A lot of people didn't read the article. Yeah, <laughs> which is usually what happens per, on wrestling Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah, per usual. Wrestling Twitter does not read at all, man. Mm-hmm. Reading, yeah. What's that? Right. Yeah. Wait. Or so if they did read, I even hit the little read more thing at the bottom to really fully get the grasp of what what was happening. And, yeah. Instead of reading 160 characters, I read 240. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But real quick, Manny, what like exactly what was like the article saying? Because you read it. All right. So from what I understand, because I feel like once I say that, anything I say is valid because it's what I understood. But the the guy was basically breaking it down to uh, AW is basically starting to get more global because they signed people like this, the Mercedes Monet. Uh, Okada and uh, Osprey. Was, Osprey, yeah, Will Osprey. So, because they sign people like that, they have an, a chance to have a global audience, unlike the WWE, who doesn't have somebody like an Okada, Mercedes Monet, and a Will Osprey on their roster to counter really what AEW has uh, in their in their roster. So that was very uh, puzzling to me when when I saw that. But um, hold on, before because he, he had a quote. So if y'all want if y'all want to get into it, I gotta I gotta find this quote that the guy said. That was really the funniest part. I just find it funny that you or well, whoever this guy is says WWE. What are you gonna counter with? AEW just got Okada, Mercedes Monet, and Will Ospreay. And then I look over in the WWE and they got CM Punk, Jay Cargill, and The Rock. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, all right. Okay, pal. Man, also, that was another thing that where, when he wrote that, I'm sitting there, I'm like, did he just, like, did you not look at the names side by side and go, hmm, hmm, one of these is moving the needle, just one person, and they have all three. Bro. And also, the WWE has been around for 40 years, 40 plus years. And bro's talking like, yo, y'all not global. It's like, dog, <laughs> I think I think we're pretty global. I don't, I don't know. They just sold out that stadium in Australia with four matches. Come on, man. What What is this guy's name that wrote this? Is it, is it Antonio Khan? <laughs> Who wrote this shit, man? <laughs> I see what you did there. Joseph Joseph Stawaski or Stazwiski. <laughs> tomato tomato. Whatever that fucking means. Word Joseph, you sound like a clown to me, man. Now I'm not gonna lie, that AW's free agent run though, it is impressive. It's very impressive, but it, the comparisons is just killing the vibes. It's like it's like, yeah, they got, but why y'all why always got to say, oh, WWE struck out and they ain't, 
doing it's like fam shots out the aw they did land some impressive talents they did and we could just keep it at that and we can see how it's gonna move the needle in the future we could just leave it straight like that leave it right what I do wonder if that writer is a wrestling fan because I do notice that when non wrestling fans write about wrestling, they sometimes get stuff wrong. So they don't do all of their research. They don't really know what's going on. They just kind of piece together an article based on a couple articles they might have found and then, you know, write their narrative or whatever. But Joseph, I'm wondering if he's a wrestling fan. I'm going to try and find him when I'm done. Yeah, X Files music on Joseph. We got to do our homework <laughs> on Joseph. <laughs> Joseph Stawaski, man. We're gonna we're gonna be the downfall of this guy's writing career. Just <laughs> bro, but this is this is exactly like I come on here and I joke a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I might call myself a doctor and I might give Jenky, you feel me, uh doctor advice and health advice and shit like that. And I might come out here and say I'm a journalist, but literally, like it's shit like this that makes me say that though. You know what I'm saying? Like it's people like that that's that makes me say, yo, I could I could do that too. Cause it's like, bro, like I legit am wondering, it's like, bro, did you really take your time to like like what research did you do? Cause now I'm questioning everything that you're doing. It's like, what research did you do? Are you serious? Like, was this like some quota shit that's like, yo, you you have an assignment due today at this time? And this nigga's like, oh shit, uh WWE AEW. It's, it's better than it's like come on bro what are we doing man listen to him in this article will osprey is basically lebron leaving cleveland to go to miami he said he's restoring the feeling <laughs> yeah and then he was like uh oh this is the part that made me laugh on the when i was reading it he said because at your worst you want to keep talent away from your closest competitor the wwe's biggest signing have been wrestlers on their way out of AEW. Like Cody Rhodes, Jade Cargill, Sean Spears, Brian Pillman Jr., and the fired CM Punk, with Naomi being an exception to that. And then he's like, "But if you listen to, if you listen to a uh, Osprey and Monet talk about AEW, they see something bigger on the horizon, similar to what WCW had in the past." I'm sitting there and I'm like, "Why are we? Why are we doing this so early?" Like Mercedes. She just, you know, you know, cut the promo. She she hasn't really even done anything anything yet. And here we are. Mm. Now we're like, oh yes, this is it. This is where the, the companies get closer. But it's really it's really like here. And even then, that's just being nice so the people can see it on the screen. But the gap is not a it's not a closed gap the way this article makes it seem by these signings. Mm -mm -mm. Joseph. I got my eye on you, pal. I don't <laughs> like this shit, man. <laughs> now, wait, Lo, I have a question, though. With sure. all these signings, right? The uh, One thing you mentioned earlier, especially with, like, Wardlow, is that they had no direction for him. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they have direction for any of these three signings? I do. Um, what I am worried about is Jay White. Because mm, Jay yes. White, I feel like, has not been utilized properly. And I don't know if the guy in the article mentioned that. But Jay White was a huge signing for them. Jay White, mm -hmm. I think Jay White was looking at going to WWE as well. But he did decide on AEW. And he hasn't been utilized in a singles capacity. Yeah, he went, against, went up against Darby Allen, But he had a match against MJF and lost. Mm -hmm. And MJF was in the back of the, <laughs> of the ambulance right before the match. So I think he needs to kind of focus on that as well. Like you have Jay white on your roster and he's wrestling in a six man tag or however many, if they're still with the acclaimed, but can you really say that if you have Jay white who really hasn't even been utilized, but I do think with Okada Monet and um, Osprey, I feel like they definitely have a path with them, especially Monet. I feel like she's not going to come in there and just let them do whatever. I also think that lady that they just signed Jim Pepperman, I feel like they signed her specifically for that women's division. Hmm. Well, I I feel like the women's division is like open for just shaping it around mm -hmm. Monet at this point. Yeah. Agreed. Man. I I would say shouts to Joseph, but no shouts to Joseph. That dumbass article, man. <laughs> 
Uh, up next, we got Baron Corbin. <laughs> Baron Corbin, you're one half of the tag team champions right now in NXT. Hold on. Put, put Cody on the screen, please. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all got to put that? <laughs> Why are we putting him? Isn't he? Nah, he is. I'm just bullshitting. I'm fucking. <laughs> oh, I thought I, I thought I missed something. Yeah, nah. Baron is uh, he's obviously he's done some things. You know what I'm saying? In in the Fed, you know, tag team champ, United States champion, King of the Ring, Money in the Bank winner. You know, Andre the Giant. Do we do we celebrate? Is that a real thing? Do we count that Andre the Giant battle royal? That's just like that's a little you know that's a little resume builder. It's like that's a soft like, skill. Yeah. yeah, like um, I can type like, eighty words a minute type shit. Like, exactly, right, or getting a Google certificate. <laughs> Throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? But do y'all think NXT can help Van Corbin rebound? And you know this this question to me is a little crazy because it's like rebound to what? I think this is the best Van Corbin has ever been. Like the nigga's been losing for as long as I've been seeing him. Honestly, he's in shape. Listen, that that receding hairline Baron Corbin did some special things in NXT. I'm just saying. He was killing it with that long balding on the top. Yeah. Long hair. Stringy ass hair. Come on. But he wasn't in shape though. Nah. Listen, man. He's he tried his best. <laughs> this Baron Corbin, I don't know. He came to the main rust and I, I remember back, you know, you know, it's crazy when we first started the show back in like 2017, I had super high hopes for Baron Corbin. Cause I think this is around the time he came to the main roster and I was like, yo, Baron Corbin. Nice, bro. I, was, I, I could see, I was like, I could see it with him and, and nothing really happened. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but you know, <laughs> what were you seeing? I thought, yo, I'm, there was a time when I really thought he could have been like, well, this is when the, the red universal championship was around like I was like yo I could I could maybe see it I might could be able to see him as universal champ it just never happened but yeah Lo what do you how do you feel about Baron Corbin I don't <laughs> or, <laughs> thumbs up <laughs> I watch NXT mainly for like Lash Legend Carmelo um trick honestly I'm rooting for everyone black over there see? I don't pay attention to the other people at this point. I feel like they don't really have any captivating storylines for me. See this right here. This is real journalism. You <laughs> <feel me? laughs> this is what the streets need, man. We don't give a damn about Baron Corbin. Yeah, I, I don't know. I do you, like his. I do like his TikToks though, where he's cooking. I can I, get with that. I was yeah, just he grilling. Food. Yep. <laughs> He needs to go work at like an Outback Steakhouse. That's where he'll really be a champion right there. Outback? Yeah. Yo, you know no, what a low reds? ball. What a Lord. low ball. No. Wait, y'all don't like blooming onions? <laughs> There's a space for this. All right. So you know how they have that show, like Secret Boss or whatever it is? Well, like, it, yeah. they got, yeah, the boss pull up with like a phony mustache. They should do a show called like Secret Chef. And it's just mad, like unsuspecting people that pull up. And they're just nice. They just know how to cook. So I feel like Baron Corbin should pull up in like a two pane glasses and be like, he's like a six cook. six. <laughs> <laughs> he'd pull up. You feel me? He's on a chop or whatever that show is, but they give you a basket. You just gotta make shit. Yeah. And he can really finesse it. So yo, know, Baron Corbin, there's a there's a space for you. It might not be in wrestling, but it is in the culinary world. And I believe that. And so does Lo and all of us. <laughs> Man, that's why he's still on the roster. Catering right there. <laughs> like Aaron Corbin, he come, he show up early with mad brisket. Like, yo, this, this mad smoky in the PC. This nigga's like, yo, it's like, yo, the brisket gonna be done in thirty minutes, y'all. Handing out sandwiches like government cheese. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you want mustard on yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Triple H just grabs when he's like, you know what, you just earned another year, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> around. <laughs> Triple H took a bite like, God damn, this shit good, boy. <laughs> bro, I ain't you gonna lie. get a U.S. title shot. Word. I, I had you wrong. Like, you ain't gonna get the championship, but Andre the Giant, that's all you, car. Huh? Let me get one more. <laughs> oh. 
You yeah. got the doc coming out on Peacock. The Bray Wyatt documentary on Peacock streaming April 1st. I did not see the trailer for this. I saw the trailer, but I it was on mute. I was on the phone. It was a uh, that was Bo, right? I don't know if y'all mm-hmm. seen it, but I yeah, saw Bo it, was yeah. it. Yeah, Bo looked completely different. Like the last time I don't even can't remember the last time I seen Bo, but I was like, damn, I was like, Bo looks not crazy, but I was like, yo, I, I haven't seen you in so long. Like, but yeah, man, how how we feeling about the Bray Wyatt doc? We tapping in. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm yeah. A- I'm, I definitely want to tap in and see it, man. The trailer, um, it's going. The trailer was rough, kind of to see. Like it was like, wow, Bray is really not here. You know what I'm saying? But um, just having his loved ones in there and reminiscing, and like you see people that he worked with and stuff, telling stories and all of that. It was just, it was good to see. It was just good to see. But I'm gonna definitely be tuning in. This is April first on Peacock. So yeah. I'll be t- I'll be tapped in. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to tap in. Also, this looks like it's gonna be uh, it's go- I'm gonna have to have the um, the the tissue right next to me, bro. It's gonna it's look like this one's gonna be a tear jerker. I ain't gonna lie. You feel me? Like you said, it got uh his family, Jojo, um, Bo, everybody that worked close with him and everything like that. Um, and like I said, I seen the. A little bit of the trailer and from what i saw it looked like everybody was they they kind of say the same thing that we all say and it's like yo this dude was really like brilliant when it comes to like directing and you know the, his creativity was oh, out of this world you know what i'm saying so that's something i do want to see i'm excited to see how he created all the if they show it you know how he created all that firefly funhouse stuff and and things like that and it still, it, it's still upset because I, I said this a lot, but Bray Wyatt was like, to me, he's like Rob Zombie. You know what I'm saying? Like he he could have been like the new horror flick guy. Like I feel like that could have been his lane, like him making like horror movies and horror books and shows and stuff like that because that's just right up his alley. You know what I'm saying? Like he tried to do it in wrestling. I don't think it worked out the way it, it should have in wrestling, but that I think was his that would have been his bread and butter. Is that and like he's a great person. Like you hear that from everybody. Everybody sitting there with these stories with him. Like he's a just a great person. Like like you said, man, I'll I'll definitely be tapped into this. Thanks. Lo, what you thinking? I'll definitely be watching it, too. I think WWE does a great job with their documentaries, so I think they probably will tell the story of how The Fiend came about and, you know, intertwine those stories with his family, his friends, stuff like that, um, to really captivate us and tell us the story of, you know, how The Fiend came about, who Bray Wyatt is, who Wyndham Rotunda was, you know what I mean? So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I I hope that um, the trailer, you know, just showed a little bit of what we're expecting because the trailer was well done as well. You know, having Bo in there and just the storytelling aspect of it, they did a really good job with that. Justin. Listen, the WWE, one thing they know how to make is a good documentary. Like, they they seldom miss when it comes to any type of wrestling doc. So, especially where you know it's something like Bray where they were definitely filming everything for the entire time. I mean, we're probably if they did what they did with Randy Orton's doc, this is probably going to be up there as well. So definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I was just about to say the same thing. Honestly, WWE and docs. It's like peanut butter and jelly, man. They they just they know what they're doing for real. Mm-hmm. Bray Wyatt, man, we miss you. Can't wait to see this. Uh, this doc, man, I know it's going to be good. Premier WrestleMania week, April 1st, streaming on Peacock. Yeah, man. Look out for that. Yes, sir. Uh, this week in wrestling is up next. We got some Monet talk, some Becky Lynch talk, you know, a little bit of Raw SmackDown. Let's get into it, man. Acknowledge me. Rhea Ripley. Oh, the strong is the fastest. I'm that. I don't miss. This week in wrestling. Yes, this week in wrestling, man. We could go two ways. We could go Mer- Mercedes Monet 
or Becky Lynch? The choice is yours. Low. Let's talk about Monet. Let's talk about Monet, man. Monet talks. Do I have the drop? <laughs> <laughs> ah, so Mercedes Monet made her debut last week. AW Big Business. Big Business. Big Business. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all did y'all tap in? I 100 percent did. How did yes? How did you feel, Manny, about Mercedes uh pulling up to AEW? Um, well, listen, as right as I've, I as I've ever been, you know. <laughs> this I told y'all what was gonna happen, and it happened. What can I say? Great promo, you know. I felt the emotion, the rawness. But I'm just sitting there. I'm like, how many people are tapped in like me right now? Is it as many as what Eve was gonna say? Is is as as many as what Eve said would be there when he said she finally makes her debut? And guess what, Eve? <laughs> Wait, how many people did I say was gonna be there? I think you said like over a mil or something crazy like that. To be honest, TBH listens. I don't want to. No. Did I say that or is Manny? Is this uh? I could be making it up. Who knows? But be there or tapped in. Tapped like, in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nah. Definitely not a. Yeah. He said the ratings will be up over fifty percent when she pulled up. But that's all. I'm talking about over time though. Listen. You and whoever wrote that New York Post article are probably <laughs> the only ones that believe this. Yo, but, me and Joseph. We yeah, spoke you and lot. Joseph. Like, yo, it's definitely going to be 50%, huh? Car. <laughs> you were the one giving them all the info. You were like, Joseph, yo, write this. Trust me. <laughs> I went to school for this. She's definitely bigger than The Rock. Trust me. <laughs> nah, but uh, besides that, you know, um, I do think, you know, the... This was like the the best rollout they've done for anyone in like the history of AEW. Even though it's only been like, you know, what, five or six years, probably less than six years. But the the rollout, the the teases to her arrival by putting like Boss Town in the uh in the background. You know, yeah, the cars pulling up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the signs, the fan signs. That's uh, I forgot what they said, but they were like signs about her in the background. Everything about this rollout for Mercedes Monet, it was it was money. You know, it was it's exactly what you want a, a rollout to be for a superstar. Better than what they did for Okada, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they they let her cook, and you know she she's really good at cutting those promos that make you you know, feel like a fan, especially when she talks about being a fan. So, you know, I am looking forward to what she does Um, because I don't know why recently AEW, they've been doing a lot of things that it's bringing me in. I kind of, I'm liking their vibe. I'm like, oh, I'll check out, check out this match over here, you know, stay for a segment or two. So, you know, I, I'm curious to see who's in this women's division because to be honest, I I barely know anybody on their roster that besides like Daniel Bryan and fucking Darby Allen or something. So, you know, if she's gonna help me, you know, know some other names, then I'm here for it. You do your homework. Yeah. Listen, I was terrible at homework in school, so it's tough. Lo, how are you feeling about Miss Mercedes Monet? I agree with Manny. I think that the um, promo that she gave was very good. It really drew you into what she was saying. And the fact that she came out uh, close to the end of the show and, you know, was with Willow, I thought that was really interesting um, based on their history in New Japan. But um, hopefully they keep on with the Willow and Mercedes because that's familiar, I feel like, to the AEW audience instead of really starting something new. Let them finish what they had going on in New Japan because technically they really didn't get that uh, finish with uh, Mercedes breaking her ankle in that match and Willow winning it. So um, hopefully they have that moment. But, um, you know, I really don't want to see her go for the title yet. I want her to kind of, you know, feel around the roster, have these different matches with these different women and kind of go from there. 
I think Tony and Deanna kind of have their thing going on. Let them finish that. Don't let Mercedes get involved. Let her really build herself up. Let her, you know, get familiar with that audience who might not know her. I don't know how they wouldn't, but um, let her get familiar with the audience, you know, showcase what she's working with instead of just having her go directly for that title. And I think with Willow being involved, that'll definitely help her. Yeah, and I agree with uh, basically everything that you just said, you and Manny. The um, the main thing for me is, like you said, not having her in that title chase immediately. Like, I, I feel the way you feel where she should find her footing on the roster before even competing for a title, before even being in the title picture. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get familiar with everybody, with the with the locker room, with, with you know, with whoever's here. Let's find our footing, and then we could – you know what I'm saying we could go from there, but aside from all of that, the promos and and all of that, I'm just happy to see her back on TV. I'm happy to see her wrestling. I'm a, a Sasha Banks Mercedes Monet fan. I think she's one of the greatest to to do it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen her matches over in in the E. I've seen you know what I'm saying. I've seen what she's done. I don't like this new finisher. That's that's my only knock. You feel me? If I got to knock some, I don't like the new finisher. But that's small. You feel me? That's a small complaint. But I am ecstatic and I am happy to see her back on TV. Will she she boost ratings and will it be over 50%? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I do know that I am happy to see her back and I will be tapping in to see what she does. You know what I'm saying? So that's me. I got to disagree. I got to disagree as far as... <laughs> as far as... Okay, she, I understand where it's Boston. She had her moment. I'm going to just say that. You know, that was her moment, you know, coming back, being with a company again, front of her hometown crowd. She had to give or, like, get that moment. Me, I don't like Mercedes Sasha Banks as a baby face. I love Sasha Banks. I love – I think Sasha Banks is probably – the greatest women's wrestler I've seen. So this is not coming from anywhere, but it's not coming from anywhere of hate or anything. I, it was okay. Like, I understand you got to have that moment. Cool. I understand that the promo, it was, uh, you know, it was, I understand. Yeah. You ain't the like music? music way back pulling up to the, to the arena. I'm sorry. No, not the, the, that was no, nah, that was cool. That's cool. Word. But Get that the promo up. is just like we. I understand why. Once again, I have to make that clear. You know, I always got to keep repeating myself because listeners, y'all be <laughs> yeah, li listeners don't be listening. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I have to repeat myself. I didn't like that. The music, I didn't like that either. <laughs> I, 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 the CEO chance, oh my God! It's like fam, fam. We like I, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. The music, I wasn't feeling. I like the old joint she had, the money joint. That was fire. That you don't like fire. the shit? Was she rapping like Fabio for her? Nah, nah. I'm <laughs> cool. I'm cool. Fabio just did a freestyle too. That was pretty fire, low key. Just like, I, I, I'm happy to see her back. But now we out of Boston, and but I like the ending too. Like I like the Willow, all of that. Love it. But now we out of Boston. Come to the dark side. You know what I'm saying? Come to the dark side and give us. You know what I'm saying? Just beat the hell out of Willow. Just go crazy. Just wild out. Come to the dark side, Mercedes, because that's where you play. That's that's where you will start at for me personally. Is is that what they're missing though? Like AW, like more heels? Because they just brought in Okada. You thought he was gonna be a face, boom, heel turn. Like, so do do were they missing just a couple big star heels uh to really finish out the roster? And I'm not asking just to like, you know, turn this in I don't know if they have that many heels to begin with. Mm. So it's just it's just a preference for me. It's mm -hmm. just I would rather see her work as a heel. Like, I love mm -hmm. to see heel Sasha, heel Mercedes. I love that. 
You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's when she's her best. For me, who person, would be the who would be the uh, like the face? Like, who's the biggest women's baby face in uh, AW that would be able to? Well, who to would put her on that? Like that brings up a question. Like, low. Like you say, you don't want to see her jump straight to the title. Like, give us some women that she'll be able to like that you would want to see her work with to build her way up. Mm -hmm. I think you have Willow. You have that interaction that she had with Rio, which I thought was interesting. And we mm -hmm. know Rio brings in the ratings, and Mercedes is more than likely going to bring in the ratings. So I think she would be a good one. Um, Chris Statlander would also be a good one. Um, hmm. I'd like to see her go up against Athena. I mean, I know Athena is technically a heel right now, but I think mm -hmm. that would also make a lot of sense. Um, who else do they have over there? I know a lot of people probably don't want this, but I really want to see her go up against Britt Baker. I think she could really work in the ring with Britt Baker. And I think Britt Baker promo wise, I think she can, they, they could go back and forth for a little bit, but in ring, I think Mercedes would absolutely dominate her. That's absolutely the, dominate. That's the money match for me. Her versus Britt. Call me when that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'll be, I'll be there. <laughs> It's some talent. They they got some some pieces for her to work with. That's all. It's gonna be good to see. Nah, it's a, it's a few people in there she could she could rumble with. I ain't gonna. I look. It, Cody just rattled off. I like the way you did that too. You led with love, and then you sprinkled in the little the shit that you hated. So that's, that's very. <laughs> yeah, I just like you was like yo. I ain't gonna. I I love. I love this. I love that. I love her. I hate this. I love that. I was like, <laughs> I like you, 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 you got to make that clear now because a lot of stuff I like, I'm aware how it be coming off sometimes. It's like, you got to yeah. sprinkle it in. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, Oh, you a hater. I, I see the comment. You a hater. <laughs> like, all right. That's why I repeat it. <laughs> you got to repeat it. You know, I like how Eve was helping Cody too. He was like, "What? You ain't like the Maybach? What about the Maybach?" He <laughs> <laughs> <Your> word. <laughs> He's feeding you like things to like. Her, her wig was fire too, right? <laughs> the chain? <laughs> you just name it. You're like, all right, all right, yeah, I'm here with you. Here. Nah, I feel you. Look, they they're gonna cook you anyways. They they do that with me all the when I talk about the Rock. And I'm like, yo, man, I, this shit don't make sense. And niggas be like, yo, niggas in the, I ain't gonna lie, low, yo, for like three weeks, they was in the comments like, yo, y'all are mad negative. I'm like, why y'all being so negative towards the rock? I was like, bro, I'm just giving my opinion. What you mean? He was like, nah, I miss the old days when y'all wasn't negative. Now I gotta come back the next week and be super PC. Like, all right, guys, listen, I didn't really like this, but I, I can understand. Nah, you see, yo, you see how y'all got me acting? Now, yo, just wait until WrestleMania weekend, bro. You feel me? Cause I, I'm, I think I'm gonna go to Philly to stand and deliver, and I'm gonna drive back for WrestleMania and watch it at the crib, cause we got to do a post show. And by the time that post show comes on, I'm gonna be off at least I don't know half a bottle of Douce. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, I just. Do Yo, so let me tell you. So me and my homegirl, we did like we did ninety days no alcohol, right? She was like, "Yo, I'm trying to do a ninety day challenge, no alcohol. Would you do it with me?" I was like, "All right, cool. I haven't drank alcohol in ninety days. You know what I'm saying? So right now, I'm foaming at the mouth to drink some liquor. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm foaming at the mouth to drink some alcohol. And it's the ninety days ends right around WrestleMania time. So boy." Whoo, I'm about to be on YouTube live, sweating. <laughs> and going crazy, man. Y'all better hope WrestleMania fire too. Man. I think I'm hoping it's not, to be honest. Even though I'm gonna be there, I'm, I hope it's not. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Now, now Those ticket prices are high. You better hope it's good. Listen. Amen. If if that means that Eve gets his canceled because he's drunk off too much juice, eh? I'm here for it. I just need to see what happens. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the crib. I take my mic off the stand. I'm, I'm talking like this. <laughs> I'm like, yo, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> oh my god. 
need that. Shouts to Mercedes and the Mercedes she pulled up in. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about uh, another hey, the four horsewomen. Let's talk about another one that's uh that's uh, that's pretty up there. One of the goats. You know what I'm saying? Miss Becky Lynch, the greatest of all time. She is to me. Hey man, I'm not gonna lie. First off, real quick, the match that she had on Monday Night Raw. Last last woman standing, last man standing. I what was it? It was last man standing, right? Last woman. Standing. My, you know what I mean. She's yeah. the man. She <laughs> will be standing. It's mm. last woman standing, but that was bro. When I tell you, I that was my favorite match of the night. Like I enjoyed that through and through. That match was tough, bro. I right. know. they was working their ass off. Naya, first off, Naya taking that spot. I seen her head bounce off the table. And then the table collapsed. I was like, boy, she she does it for the love of the game, man. You know what I'm saying? But back to Becky Lynch. Is she the greatest of all time? You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 have this discussion. I don't think oh, there's that's one the to be had. Let's talk about it. Oh, we really about to have it right here. Okay. Let's let's get into it. <laughs> I think we should all agree right now simultaneously. Ready? One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> Yo, but nah, you know, real quick, she does have a, her book coming out uh, on March 26. You see her right here, cooling with, with Joe, Joe Biden. Manny has a, an early copy of the book. Can we get a, 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 a solo on Manny real quick? Yo, what the hell be going on? <laughs> what the hell y'all got going on, son? Yo, that it's is hard promo. <laughs> Yo, flex bomb for that, man. <laughs> the man gets it, bro. What? All right, Great man. book. Make sure you go out and order your copy of Becky Lynch, the man. Not Your Average Average Girl by Rebecca Quinn. Oh, you on payroll. That's, I know. I was like, that sounded like an ad. <laughs> was it? <laughs> Did the check clear? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> That's payroll Giovanni right there for real. <laughs> oh, shit. That was fucking funny. <laughs> okay, yo, KP, when you make this week's uh, promo clip, can you please, like, let that be like the opening. <laughs> Let that be the opening uh, clip, please. I told way. you, me, me and LeBron are twizzies, bro. <laughs> Yo, but yeah, man. Becky Lynch uh, in Goat Talks. How are we feeling, man? See, you- I was, I was going to ask y'all, because you mentioned the four horsewomen. I was going to name y'all. I was going to say, can y'all rank them? Oh, but since we going on, <laughs> since we going, this is the conversation y'all wanted to have. I could, I'll rank them. I think I've ranked them already before. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we all have. So who's going? You want me to go first? You, you the one. I'll rank them. <laughs> go ahead. The floor is yours. All right. So four horsewomen ranks from what well, first? Which go, go four to one. Go four, four to one. Yeah, four, four to one. One. I will go Bailey. At four, three, I will go Becky. Two, I'm gonna go Sasha. And one is Charlotte. Come on, bro. What are we talking about here, guys? At what, though? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, one is Becky Lynch, (laughs) two is uh, Charlotte. Three is Sasha and four is Bailey. Matt, uh, okay. What are we doing? Low. Come on. We, give us the real list. I mean, I kind of agree. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ba- okay, Bailey, four. Mm-hmm. 
I would say Becky third. KP, don't I put this like... episode out until after. <laughs> put put the episode out on Friday. <laughs> Come on, go ahead. <laughs> well, let me let me hear it. Sasha two one Charlotte. At what? Recovering from ACL tears? <laughs> Wait, did you rank them on, on least to most injuries? No. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me let me give you out a real list. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sasha Banks four. Bailey three. Charlotte two, Becky Lynch one. That's the actual list when you really think of it. When you stop and ponder, hmm, who have I seen wrestle more? Hmm, who who does more recently? Hmm, these are the people. So it's recently. It's not overall. Well, it's it's overall. But what you what have you done for me lately plays a a major factor. What have you done into- for me? Yeah, well, Monet. Listen, how many matches in like four years? I don't know, seven. <laughs> Look at your name on here. It says Monet Bach. Hello. <laughs> it's because I was gonna interrupt Eve earlier and say was she in a Monet back, but <laughs> no, I didn't even see that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Monet back. <laughs> Come on, man. No. It's sad. Monet back. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just that's just the way it listen, just because you're four on arguably probably like all of them equally are top six or seven women's wrestlers all time. You know, just because you're four doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You're still amazing. But Becky Becky also an think, are you on her payroll? Uh, am Blink I on twice a- if it's yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to support <laughs> Becky. Yo, Cody, what's your list, huh? The real list. Four, Bailey. Three, Charlotte Flair. All right, Two. stop. Yeah. Because that Charlotte is too damn low, cuz you're going to have to. We gonna, have to re- we gonna have to restructure or something. She just got there. I'm gonna tell you, she just got there. It could have been lower. I ain't gonna hold you. Oh my god, <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. But I'm gonna chill. Now I think now nah, like three, like three and four, cool. Now here's the hard part for me: two and one. I got Becky at two, and I got Mercedes. Sasha Banks is number one, man. I'm sorry, but it's no one and one and two for me. Flip floppy, man. It's flip floppy for me. So, yeah. That's How is she your back. number one? You just shat on her whole debut. I can be honest. I can be honest. That doesn't like what I'm supposed to like everything. No. Yeah, if that's your number one. Yes, yeah, so just don't complain about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nah, I'm sorry. I'm not one of those. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a Stan account over here. No, I I have honest critiques. You know what I'm saying? I speak my mind. That's how I see it. You know what's what's wild? Or it's not even wild. To me, it's like, I don't want to say I don't hold too much credence in like ranking the the four horsewomen, but it's like, yo, we comparing greats. Like we comparing some of the greatest to ever do this shit. Mm-hmm. And, and how much they've done for the women's division for the WWE as a whole. It's like, if we ranking them, you feel me? It's like top four. It's like, bro, we ranking four great women. Like at, at the end of the day, it's like, bro, we, we ranking y'all amongst yourselves. As far as everybody else goes, we putting all of y'all at the top. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all are going right up here. That's at a the fact. End of, when it's all said and done. But yeah. Charlotte gonna have to go up on your list like by one or two. Cause I ain't gonna on lie. my list. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what gotta happen on my list? <laughs> I, mean, I, I say all that to say Charlotte gotta go up just a little bit. <laughs> Fourteen championship. Word. 
And she's yo, she's recovering from ACL surgery in record times, bro. I just saw her at a wedding doing a cha cha with a brace <laughs> on. We watched the footage on the show. Right. Charlotte, bro, you're still not yeah. selling. Still not selling. All right. You want He's me to basically- put TikTok up? Eve is basically saying uh, Charlotte's the wrestling Brock Purdy. Just recovering from, from prolonged injuries in record time. And now you calling her Brock Purdy. That's Now that's an insult. You feel me? <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. But, yeah, man. Becky, so, salute to the, to the man. You feel me? Becky Lynch. At the end of the day, man, Becky... Will be regarded as an all time great. Is she an all time great? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I, I really don't even think that's a discussion to be had because I, I think we all know what the what the deal is and what the time is when it comes to Rebecca Quinn, aka Becky Lynch. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Let's talk about this. Uh hold on. What's what's the name of this event, man? I don't want to get it get it wrong. Blood Here Sport. We, Josh Barnett's Blood Sport. Featuring Shayna Baszler. Is this Bloodsport 10? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. We're locked in. Roman numerals. We got it. So so let's let's talk about this, man. Somebody fill me in. What is going on here? What is so Josh Barnett's Blood Sport is an event every single year at Mania that happens. It I went to my first one last year, did not know what to expect. It is a wrestling ring with no ropes. So they just wrestle within the, you know, the squared circle without the ropes. If they knock, get knocked down on the ground, they come back up in the ring. Mm. Um, but it's more like grappling more than like, you know, her karanas. And obviously they're not jumping off the top rope or anything like that. Um, it's it's rugged. So I feel like Shayna Baszler being involved definitely makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think of who they had last year. They had Mike Bailey. They had uh, John Hennigan or John Morrison. They had Killer Kelly there. Um, who else did they have? Josh Barnett competes every year as well. I think he competed against Timothy Thatcher last year. I can't remember. But they always get top people um, to be in these matches. So, I mean, Shayna Baszler is like the perfect person to be in a match like this. But... She's facing Masha Slamovich. And Masha's a badass. I think this is going to be a really good match. She, she looked bad. I mm. mean, in a good way. I'm not familiar yeah. with Masha's game. Masha goes up against, like, Jake something. Like, she has a lot of intergender matches on the indies. And, I mean, she's going up against guys that are, like, 6'4", 260 and absolutely crushing it. So, I think she's really going to, you know, show up and show out with Shayna. I gotta tap in. Yeah, it sucks. Everything, everything's on Thursday. I'm like, I'm getting there on Friday. I was hoping I'd be able to. You're missing Wally Mania. Yeah, you know, so many things I'm missing because Yankees opening day. But (laughs) I'm pulling up on Saturday at 11 a.m. and I'm out (laughs) my three three p.m. I'm like, I'm missing all that shit, bro. I don't know, Eve. Maybe you should, you know, call out of work on Thursday and pull up to this and Wally Mania as a correspondent. Bro, people's like, yo, you gonna be at Mania Weekend? I was like, yo, I'm gonna be there for like four hours. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I'm gonna be there for literally like a sip of coffee. I'm pulling up as soon as NXT ends. I'm like, yo, smoking a cigarette. Like, yo, I holla at y'all, bro. <laughs> <Bye-bye>. you, <laughs> you actually pulling up with a cup of coffee, bro? NXT starts at 11 a.m. That's cool. That's so early, bro. I don't know how I'm gonna have the energy. Two, it's it takes I right, so for me it takes about two hours to get to Philly. You feel me? So I wake up, let's say I wake up at seven, you know what I'm saying? Stretch, brush my teeth, get a Red Bull, boom, hit the road. Now, as long as I'm on the road by eight o'clock at least to cross the Verrazano. I'm I'm in good shape. You know what I'm saying? Jersey's I'm knocking through Jersey in, in a second. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. nothing. So I think once I'm I'm on the road by at least eight o'clock, I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? I could get to Philly, have a cheesesteak for breakfast or whatever, you feel me? 
whatever traditional Philly <laughs> breakfast. <is. laughs> what y'all niggas eat in Philly? I don't know. Like, freeway beanies. <laughs> Yo, um, <laughs> I can have a traditional Philadelphia uh, breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Watch NXT. Get halfway ham. Not even halfway. I'm going to get a little, you know, have a, maybe a couple claws, a couple tall boys. You know what I'm saying? Because I do got to drive back. We're going to be responsible. And then hit up Ishka Bibbles. Boom. We back on the highway. I got work to do, bro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you got to record the post show. Yeah, man, post show's got to get done. Unless I, unless I record it live from the Verrazano Bridge. You know what I'm <laughs> Fire. So, this is what it is. But now, nah, the blood sport thing does seem cool. It seemed like, uh, I was going to say, it seemed like raw underground with the like the no rope shit. And I love that. So that seemed like something right up my alley, to be honest. Are you going to be? It was, I'm not. No, I'm flying in. I think I think we landed like five or six, and then we're going to Wally Mania. So, no, I will not be at Bloodsport. Damn, I was gonna see you. Somebody go on IG Live from Bloodsport, and I'm <laughs> I'm tapping that way on their iPhone five. <laughs> you feel me? But now, if you're going to Wally Mania, that's perfect. Just go on IG Live for Wally Mania, and I'm gonna tap in right there. It's like I'm, <laughs> I'm right there with y'all. Exactly. So I'm reporting Hand- live. Exactly. <laughs> Hand the phone to Kaz. Tell him we said what's up. And then <laughs> I'm on there like, yo, Kaz, pass the phone to Rob Van Dam. <laughs> Let me say what's up. Oh, oh man. My iPhone 5. And Wale Mania is crazy. Man, real quick, I want to. The WWE collab since Triple H took over is we got to see Shinsuke wrestle with the great Muda, uh, Charlie Dempsey wrestle in all Japan. TNA Knockouts Champion. Um, what's her name? Jordan Grace. Yes, Jordan Grace. Thank you, my brother. Was in the Royal Rumble. And I was seeing this, Shayna Baszler with, uh, doing a GCW event. So this is pretty cool, man. Triple H doing his big one. Love it. You know what I mean? And they're saying that Shayna Baszler is not going to be the only superstar involved in blood sports. So a lot of people are thinking maybe Charles Dempsey. I want to see Pete Dunn. Mm. Like Pete Dunn's a little crazy. He could he could get rowdy in blood sport. That'll be fire. Yeah. Now, here here's the thing. So also in the article, uh, one of the reasons why they mentioned uh, Monet being so interesting is that she said AEW gives her the freedom to be able to work around the world, do different things with different promotions. Or not the possibility of doing it. In that same breath, Triple H is literally doing that same thing with other superstars. Even though what they're doing now is basically with people that don't really have anything going on, like just no programs and things like that. But they're still doing it. And he was kind of doing it in NXT with he would bring in like a James Storm for like two weeks or something like that or um, with the Cruiserweight Classic, where he was in charge of that, he brought in uh, Ibushi. Oh, yeah. Was Ibushi was, was in that. And Zack Sabre Jr., I believe. Exactly. Yeah, Zack Sabre Jr. was in there, too. So Triple H, he's big on collabing with other promotions. It's kind of what Sasha Banks wanted. Or who who knows what she wanted in totality, but it's looking like Triple H is the boss that she wants. You think it's a money thing? <laughs> because, I, yeah. I, I I know I saw one of the reports that's like she's the highest paid uh female performer in the history of wrestling or something like that. But, yeah, I seen that too. But I seen I seen something wild. It was like, yo, she's getting paid 13 million dollars. And I was like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I just I don't know if that's like a funny money article, like some Joseph shit that he wrote. But I, 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 I I need to see the books, man. I need to see, and I'm never gonna see these books, but I'm just saying that, like, yo, I gotta. What is the truth? I need to know what's real. You know what I'm saying? I'm the truth. <laughs> Manny knows the books. Bro. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, come on. You Manny see this right here. Everybody. He knows everybody contract. She's getting paid 13 million pesos. That's that. That's the 13 million she's getting. I don't know about no 13 million USD. <laughs> 
I mean, we didn't speak about it before, but uh, I, I mean, since we're talking about her again, she, apparently she was getting paid by uh, AEW for like two months already, or two or three months. It's been some months she's been getting paid by him. So, you know, oh, and in the interview I was watching with that she did with uh Evan Mack, she was like, "Yo, I'll be spending mad bread on like rubies and crystals." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, "What?" what? So that's how I knew she was she was making some some big bread because she is spent she the Kyrie Irving of wrestling. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> she said she spent like a thousand dollars on a, a crystal. And I was like, "See, all right, man. <laughs> yeah, I see why she went there. I see why she went there. <laughs> all right, my your needs is your needs on another level now. Yeah, see, yo, Tony Khan, I need eighteen million dollars for crystals too. <laughs> Holler at me, please." You know, but uh, you know, Sasha Banks, shouts to you. You getting paid officially? You are the highest paid female wrestler ever. So flex bomb for that. Also, that's the longest flex bomb of all time. <laughs> it, it's only long because you, know, you flex drops bomb over bomb, so it's. You feel me? I I don't have the capability to do that right now because I did not buy my MPC yet. So uh, soon, I felt I'll, like Oppenheimer. <laughs> I'll be able to drop bomb, bomb, bomb. But yeah, man, shouts to Monet. Uh, do y'all want to talk about SmackDown or Trick and Lash? The Trick and Lash thing got me tight, so sure. I wouldn't be mad if we just skip it all together. I don't know. I'm I'm right with you, bro. I'm be honest. Yeah, Hayden. That should have wow, been me. Wow, I know, right? I love it. Should have been me. I mean, yo, love love is love. You feel me? We, I'm I'm a fan of black love, but yeah, not that black love. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a, I'm a fan of black love, but I've only heard Eve say this about one other, one other couple. Who? Chris and Rock and Blueface. <laughs> That's the Chris and Rock. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> that's not that's not her name. <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> Who the hell is that? Chris Ann is not with us right Chris... now. She's at work. Chris <laughs> Chris and Rock, man. Look. Oh my! I make Chris my fault. Listen, this is a black announce table. You feel me, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> You said Chris and Rock. It's been crazy, man. I thought you were talking about Chris <laughs> Rock, was it? <laughs> Shouts out to Chris. Thanks. Right. Salute. <laughs> Gotta cut that bomb short. But uh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, this right here, man. This caught me off guard. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Cause I didn't, I was literally like the last person to find out that there was a couple. Like I found out on TV. I was like, yo, what's going on? Like <laughs> What's going on, Ma? <laughs> Turns out they've been a couple for mad long. I had no clue. I had no idea. Fire. Yo, this oh, is why we need Total Divas back. Yes, absolutely. When, yo, when Total Divas, let me tell you something. When Total Divas was around, I was tapped in. I knew what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And it, it kept me aware. I was like, oh, you it. All right, cool. You and y'all, all right, cool. I have no clue anymore, so I'm just going based off vibes. You know what I'm saying? I see that. Though now the vibe is off. But other because you didn't know beforehand, <laughs> I had no you idea. Had to get permission from you. Yeah, kind of. That's. Yeah. Oh, it would have been nice if he asked. That's yeah. all I'm saying, Leo. That's ty- make- that's kind of crazy, low key. Or make me aware. You feel me? <laughs> What's that old uh matter of fact? I'm not about to bring that up. I was gonna be like, yo, what's that old t-shirt that used to be in the hood? If you see the police, Warner Brothers. <laughs> Let me know. You know hey, we should, we should kind of <laughs> you should kind of make that a, a, a t-shirt. I'm just saying, if you date in Lash Legend, Warner Brother. Word, let me know. <laughs> yo, yo KP. that t-shirt was so trash, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, that, was, that was the era of trash t-shirts, bro. My favorite is like when you would go on like vacation, like to the Bahamas or 
or something like that or Bermuda, they would have their version. So it would be like Bermuda. If you see if you see the police, Warner Brother, I would I would always cop a a, a T. Manny got mad at them shirts from everywhere he visited. Exactly, it's like my <laughs> version of the Hard Rock shirt. Then got one in a, a Dominican one. I it's in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Necesita policía. <laughs> how do you, how do you say Warner Brother in Spanish? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Manny's the worst Dominican ever, bro. Manny is dead. <laughs> Yo. Man. Uh, let's talk about SmackDown real quick. <laughs> you guys really said no lash and trick. We're done. No, I mean, what, what, let's talk about what you, what, how do you feel I about it? I think it's that? beautiful. Did you see, did you see tonight? Her mind was all on trick. Nine. That of- one kiss. <laughs> they kissed again. Me. They oh, you not still think again. She was no, still, she's thinking still thinking about thinking it a about week it. later. Yes. Wow. It was he the dip that mean. did it. Him dipping her before he kissed her. That did it. Still the deal. <laughs> Somebody like me would have dropped her. <laughs> well, she's like <laughs> she's four. <laughs> I would have went yeah, oh. hold you. That's exactly why I trick about to lose, man. <laughs> See, you, you gotta focus on Melo right now, man. You gotta get your mind right, get your head in the game, player. That's true. He's too worried about tricking. <laughs> man, he's All like, right, man. You got to, fellas, you, you make great points. You know what I'm saying? But nah, shouts to Trick and Lash, though. Love is love. Love is beautiful. I didn't know there was a real thing for in all seriousness. You know what I'm saying? So shouts to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I find out Jakara Jackson is with, with Banks, I'm <laughs> really. That's crazy. We'll really have to turn up. Low, I don't know if you've seen the DM or not the DMs, but the Twitter exchange between somebody named Banks and Jakara Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had it so we, we could. Oh man, I wish we had that. Is he Just... shooting a shot? Oh, <laughs> was he? Oh boy, <laughs> he invited he invited her to a uh, Dave and Buster's, and instead of politely declining, she. <laughs> <laughs> she proceeded to shit on him and Dave and Buster's Damn. and say that she is uh he was disrespecting her by even offering her to go to an establishment of that low class. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> well hold on, wait, because when, when Manny said Dave and Buster's, you made a face. Me? Uh-oh. I, I seen <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Dave and Bus is not a cool establishment. No, I'm the guest. Excuse me. Is is that I mean, is that not cool? Like first date material. It's like, all right, we about to go have some, you know, pot stickers, play ski ball, bowl, fruit ninja. <laughs> Dude, no. I, I, that seems more of like a third date. So Get to know him a little bit. Go to dinner first for the first date. Yeah, I mean, we could do dinner right here. Dave. That's what no, I'm no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about dinner. I'm like, yeah, I said that. You don't You're know about you don't know about the twenty five dollar power up menu. You get the twenty five dollar card with you know some tenders, a burger. <laughs> Two margaritas, mozzarella sticks. Okay, wait a margarita. See? Ah. Uh, <laughs> we'll the right on in. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, speaking of margaritas real quick, I had probably one of the best margaritas I ever had this past weekend, man. <sighs> Yo, Cantina in White Plains. Oh. oh. Have mercy. Yeah, oh, I, you were right by my hood. Yeah, I was in your ends, bro. I ain't gonna lie, yo. Cantina, the the what was it? They first of all, it was it was my girlfriend's friend's birthday. We pulled up margarita pitchers on the house. Oh, ooh, chips and chips and guac on the house. Yo, you're speaking my language. Yo, I pull out. First off, I went crazy with. They had strawberry and regular margarita. I took both of them and did this. <laughs> yo. <laughs> The best margarita I had in a long time, Cantina in White Plains, man. Go get you some. <laughs> Go Bro, get you some. Listen, I had the best Bahama Mama I've ever had in my life. I didn't even know that was a 
a beverage. And listen, they need to start putting those in masculine glasses. But other than that, <laughs> the Bahamas, y'all went crazy with that drink, man. My God. Man. I'm telling you, man. Lo, what's the best drink you ever had? <laughs> so while we talking about drinks. Two of them made me drunk, by the way. Blackout drunk. Damn. Two? Yeah, they I told the guy, I was like, yo, I'm trying to be I'm I'm not trying to remember this airplane ride because this was right before I flew back. And he was like, Bet I got you. I drank two of them. I was like, How am I this drunk? Yeah, I was getting on a Boeing, so I knew I was gonna die. So I oh, took a couple Jesus. couple drinks on the way up. <laughs> the best drink I've ever had. Hmm. I don't know, but I've had a lot of good prickly pear margaritas. Ooh, I've had mm. a couple of those. Those are elite drinks. Hold on, time out. I'm yo, I'm real I'm just like realizing this. How did we not talk about drinks this entire time? You literally be drinking wine, wrestling wine down is your thing. Like, how did we not talk about wine and drinks this entire time? Yo. We got it. We Yo, got into Bahama Mama talk before wine. Facts. I'm ashamed of myself, bro. Poor journalism. <laughs> That's a fail. <laughs> but yeah, you said prickly pear margaritas? Yes. From where? Those are the way to go. Um, I've had a couple at a place here called El Dorado Cantina. They're really good. Um, I had some in Chicago, but I don't remember where. But they were good. We're going to find those in Philly. Even though I don't know if Prickly Pear exists in Philly, you know, they kind of just drink do-rag sweat or something. I don't know. <laughs> Philly kind of scares me as a as a city. Well, you know what? I did not. see someone tweet earlier. They said that they don't sell alcohol everywhere. You have to go to a specific store to buy alcohol in Philly. And I was like, there's no way. A specific store? And look yes. where y'all want to go. <laughs> Is this the same Philadelphia freeway and, and Beans was rapping about? Yeah. You're telling me I can't get a four loco in any store? Drinking I'm going to try and find the tweet. Margarita. This girl tweeted it earlier. <laughs> well, you're telling me I can't get a, I can't pull up anywhere and get a drink? That's crazy. Dream Chases Cantina. <laughs> <laughs> you pull up, they serve you on dirt bikes. <laughs> this lady said, you won't be able to buy beer at convenience stores or alcohol anywhere but a PA wine and spirit store. We need to move WrestleMania. How many weeks we got? <laughs> Two. We, we can. The Rock yeah. can make it happen. We, aren't you? Wait, well, I don't know if you are in charge of it, but I'm making you in charge of it now. The petition to get WrestleMania in Vegas. So we're trying. We got to make that oh, happen. No. When WrestleMania comes to Vegas, I'll be in Vegas three weeks ahead of time. <laughs> I'll be in Vegas. <laughs> don't, do, don't do that. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be me and Bruno Mars giving me gambling advice. <laughs> <laughs> Hit on 18. <laughs> Bro, somewhere your Anderson Pack is somewhere with a, a potato sack over his head right now. <laughs> Not smiling for the first time. <laughs> yeah. I, yo, I'm not going to sell our rights to the show, but I will sell my right to the show. So, I, y'all just might have a new co host if Vegas, if, yeah. uh, if our WrestleMania is in Vegas. I'm going to just sell my rights as a human. I will not have any <laughs> money in Vegas no more. You can sell them as human rights, man. This thing crazy. Um, SmackDown. I, I can't, I really can't remember what happened with SmackDown, if you're being honest. But, uh, what what's going on? Jo oh, the Rock. How can I forget? Let's let's we can end with this. The Rock concert. Lo, you go first. What is there to talk about? <laughs> this man, you know what? I appreciate that this man shows up to work every week and he delivers, you know, great outstanding promos, but Honestly, I feel like whoever is dressing him at Versace is probably getting a great commission at this point, but I don't know. I just, I like The Rock, but also I'm just kind of like, they're doing a lot of talking for me. 30, 45 minute promos, like, 
cut it to 15, cut it to 20. Like they're talking too much. Less is more. Um, before you go further, okay. Are you not entertained? I am entertained. I actually have a rock shirt on right now, so I probably shouldn't be talking too much shit. I was gonna I was gonna mention it if he didn't, just saying. <laughs> You know, I, I, I am entertained, but also at the same time, there's been weeks where they've gone for so long that it impacts the women, and I don't fuck with that. Mm. Like, at some point, you have to balance your time correctly and not go out there for 45 minutes when your family member, Naomi, is coming up right after you. You just cut her her entrance so we, you, we can hear you talk for another 10. After you just gave us a 30-minute promo on Instagram. Yes, Don't that no, that. that I didn't watch. Oh, you should tap in. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty electrifying. <laughs> you, <miss> <laughs> you have, yeah, you have thirty minutes to give to the Rock. Thirty more minutes to give. Listen, it's the Rock. I'm, <laughs> I'm tapping in every time. You know that is literally the excuse everybody gives for anything the Rock does, whether it's good or not. Yeah. Like it's the Rock. I'm like it's the Rock. What does that mean? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> But I'm I'm yeah. glad you said that because when I say it, they call me a hater, and I'm you like, are. like I'm just I'm pointing out the truth. You know what I'm saying? Huh. I'm not hating. I love the rock the same way we all do, but I'm just pointing out like, yo, this is a little. He just said this on Instagram, you know, four hours ago. You know what I'm saying? Is that bubble? Well, a, a bubble popped up on my screen. Did yeah, I, it did. You activated it. There you go. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if it pop. Yeah. Yeah. Manny, does it pop up for you? Apparently, I didn't make any good points. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Damn, nothing popped up. But yeah, no. Nah, nah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what What can we say about The Rock that we haven't said for seven weeks in a row so far? Oh, uh, I mean, he, he's he's pointed out that John Morant, you know, being, being a little trouble. I'll be honest, man. I'd... I'd and I don't like coming here and talking about The Rock because y'all going to say I'm hating. But this nigga was offbeat like a mother. He was didn't, had no rhythm. He had the little the shit set up with paper, reading the words. He had a nigga on a harmonica. Come on. What are we doing? This was crazy. Like, come on, yo, Rock. Come on, bro. I, you got to choose. I've been, I've been teasing you, saying you not, you ain't been black since two thousand four. I've been, you know, I've been taking my little jabs, but when you go out there and you have no rhythm, you proving me right. Come on, bro. It's we supposed to be on the two and the four, not the one and the three. You know what I'm saying? And a one and a two and a three and a four. This nigga rock just all fucking the vibe up, singing. I'm like, come on, Cole. What are we doing? Weren't, weren't they in Memphis? Yeah. 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 So, you know, some blues, it, it don't really go on on that beat. It's really what you're feeling in your soul at the time. My soul told me that was some bullshit. Oh, <laughs> That's what my soul told me, man. Where's the rhythm? I'm surprised you ain't going to talk about my man's rebuttal. The boy. Ooh. Cody? Come on, man. See where we out here. <laughs> Well, I don't know why Jay Uso popped up with his G glasses <laughs> on, but all right, I, think, I guess. <laughs> Those yeah. glasses are so crazy, too, by the way. Like, my boy got yeet across the glasses. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> I, I feel like pop culture wise, every Pacific Islander is 10 years behind at, ever, at all times. My boy Jay Uso got yeet vision. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, what are we doing? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Vision. Are they selling those? <laughs> they want to They should. Yo, wait. Yeet Vision is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Yeet Vision is hilarious. <laughs> That's the episode title name, uh, KP, by the way. That is amazing. The sign in the back say, call Rikishi. Yeah, yes. We should call Rikishi, bro. For what? <laughs> For some help, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? His son's fighting each other. Chill. Nah, I'm not. I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna hold you. I've been rocking with the Rock, Roman, the Uzo, all of this storyline going on. If they add one more Samoa, hold on, let me drink. Yeah, since y'all all <laughs> copycat. If they add one more Samoa into this damn storyline, I'm done. <laughs> Too many. 
Who I can't can take it anymore? It's not gonna be not yet. It's it's coming though. Yeah, but I got a whole nother. You know, I, I'll save it. I'll save my theory. But but yeah, can you speak on Cody Rose's promo real quick? I liked it by the way. I seen. I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't see it live, <clears throat> but uh, I seen it on TikTok, and I was like, "My boy Cody, you you talking that talk?" You know what I'm saying I, I liked it. That's my guy. I man. feel like Cody needs Brandy out there. Hmm? I, I think we need a Brandy promo. You notice how Brandy has not been brought up when he's dissing everybody, right? He's dissed Dusty. He's dissed Teal, his sister. Um, he's dissed all of his family, the the dog, but not Brandy. That's the queen, chill. Got to bring back Eden Styles. That's her name, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Eden? Yeah. No, we got to bring back Open Mic Night. Mm. So you want Brandy to call Naomi like a heifer or something like that? <laughs> and then they get into like a slap box? That's what's going to happen. Nigga said they slap box. <laughs> No, I mean, I think I think it is interesting that he has not brought up Brandy. Like, I'm wondering what the significance of that is. Is Brandy going to get involved at some point? I mean, homegirl's out there just doing her yoga, chilling. She could come and cut a promo. Mm. You think that that's going to be the, the one that sets him over the edge? Talking about his wife? Yes. And his, chi- his children? His child? Yes. I thought the dog was going to send him over the edge, to be honest with you. <clears throat> White yeah. people don't play about their dogs. No, nah, they don't. They White people and dogs. dogs, they locked in, man. Black people and dogs, too, depending on what True. kind of If it's a pit bull, I, 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 if I, I'll die by my pit bull. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> and I don't even got a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> no, <what>? All right. <laughs> I'll die by them, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? But nah, this this rock uh and, and Cody feud, bro. Uh what see I'll say this. Wait, wait, you said it right there. This rock and Cody feud. Where's Roman? Man, I was Me. just about to say <laughs> this this rock and cody feud. I don't like the fact that it's pushed Roman to the back. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of to me, it's like the rock all up in the videos. He all up in the in the limelight. It's like, bro, this just has nothing to do with you. You're not the champion. He's you know a saying? Luigi nigga. He's player B. Like he's player two. Like <laughs> he is, and it's it's it kind of. I don't want to say it's upsetting, even though it kind of is. It's like, bro, Roman. Like I can count on my hands how many times Roman has spoken over the last like six weeks. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on. I, I kind of I want more from Roman, but. It's kind of too late at this point. You know what I'm saying? WrestleMania is two weeks away. The cake is baked. So we just got to see what we get. You know what I'm saying? Bro, y'all not, you're not looking at the storyline with the Yeet vision on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> Trust me, I'm not. Y'all need, to, y'all, need to, y'all need to understand. This is how we get Roman and The Rock. The Rock's doing too much talking. He's going he's gonna to cash... You know, checks that Roman can't cash, or what, however the fuck the saying goes. You know, he's gonna write checks that Roman can't cash. If so, facto Roman Rock WrestleMania next year. Book it right now. It's happening. KP, I want you to, uh, if we could save this in like a file or some shit for next year. Like, we we need to save all of this shit for next year's WrestleMania. I will. In fact, we have one that you a bet that you all made like three years ago that's coming up in two weeks. So cool. I have been keeping track of the long term bets. This is crazy. Yeah, hold on. Time out, nigga. <laughs> like, I will, uh, I think it said I'll bet from three years ago. Yep. Brother, the, I don't really want to spoil it just yet, but I'm keeping track of it. Wow. I wouldn't want KP as my bookie. He would definitely break my leg. <laughs> yo, a bet from three years ago. That means, yo, well, Chris ain't here, so it like it involved her though. It was, of course, you know, y'all three, bro. Hmm. All right, so we'll have to see what this bet is. I, when are we gonna find out? Is it? 
Are we going to find out around Mania before Mania? Yeah, it involves Mania. So well, we, we have to wait to that week of the show. Wow. Well, it's three years in the making. What a build. Yeah, this is this this is what I want to see between Roman and, and Cody. It's the three year build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to him finishing to him finishing his story. Listen, how if you think it took a long time for Cody to finish his story, imagine when Yo. I finish mine. Sir, how much <laughs> is she paying you? Listen, I'm just saying. Make sure, <laughs> nah, make, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> make sure you finish Becky's story. The man, not your average, average girl. Yo, yes. Don't be like me and and, and finish half of my story. Like I did with this community college degree. <laughs> Finish your entire story, bro. Go Even to school. Of unfinished story. <laughs> We're here. You want to be me? like low. Yeah, we're be yes. like low and get what do you have? A master's, bachelor's? I have a bachelor's. Come on now. Be like low and get a full degree. If me and Manny put our two associates degrees together, we have a bachelor's degree. And what'd you get yours in marketing? In business? Yo, we marketing. have a bachelor's in business, bro. Yeah, if we put our, our two degrees together, so we could definitely open like uh, a a smoothie store that stays open for at least seven months with our with our brains and our degrees, where and our work ethic <laughs> yeah. and our terrible credit scores combined. <laughs> yeah, yo, I'm not gonna lie. Speaking of credit scores, yo, Credit Karma emailed me today. <laughs> and, you know, I opened that shit. <laughs> I was like, yo, what? Why should drop how much? It's over. <laughs> you know it's bad when they email you with a period at the end of the subject. It's not even like an exclamation point. Like, check your credit score, exclamation. It's check your credit score, period. That's just <laughs> from Credit Karma, subject, open this in private. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> they, they handed you the email face down. Word. Word. <laughs> I'm over here in the Chipotle line covering my phone up like this. Like, can I afford this shit? I don't know. <laughs> wow. You had to pay in for your Chipotle meal? <laughs> I had to affirm pay my shit? <laughs> Yo, here's $6 now. I'm going to pay out the other six in two weeks. <laughs> Y'all are insane. <laughs> Anyways, guys... Uh, we're apparently we're gonna finish our story in a few weeks, according to KP. Uh, but as far as as far as finish goes, this podcast is about done. I don't think we have anything left to cover. Man, it's been a this this is one for the books. I had a blast. Lo, yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Before we get out of here, please let the people know where they can find you. Yes, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST if you want merch, whether you're a bad bitch or you're a hot girl that watches wrestling. Shop.wrestlingwindownlv.com. Nice. Hell oh. yeah. Take us out of here, Cody Dre. Let's do it, man. Let's pray my drops are in order as I, you know, play my signature last drop this time. Let's do it. I, there I, we go. I, I give my all. I give my all. Y'all know the vibes, man. YouTube.com slash Black and Ounce Table. Look, run it up. The Chris Van Vliet interview is up. The Brian Williams interview is up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of big things are going. You know what I'm saying? The subs are going up. Thank you and shouts to everybody that's been subbing to the YouTube and showing love. We really appreciate you. Uh, Patreon.com slash Black and Ounce Table. A lot of good things going on over there as well. A new worst take coming soon. Uh, we got to do a, another. Uh, uh, it's WrestleMania season, so you know we got to do a watch along. Um, and yeah, new wire tap was up. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead, man. Tap into that Patreon. Lots of good content up there. And you know where to find me at. I'm Sky High Eve on literally everything. So yeah, our story's going to be finished in a few weeks. As far as right now, this episode is finished. We'll see you guys next week. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>